What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Footballers. My name is Tony and you can follow me down below at Lyman Football. Today's video, we're going to be looking at what another NFL player was. Now the last one for Jalen Ramsey did so good. We want to make sure we have at least one of these coming out to you guys every single week. So the first thing I want you to do is comment down below who you want to see next. Today's video, we're checking out Taylor Luan's gear, the most swaggy lineman in the entire league right now. Now he's had a lot of injury issues this year, so it's been a little tougher to get really good high quality photos, but I'm pretty sure I know everything that he's wearing right now on the field. Let's jump into this video. Okay, so if you're familiar with the way these videos work, what we do is we start all the way at the head and we go all the way down to the feet and tell you exactly every single piece of gear that that player is wearing that we can identify. The first piece of equipment that he has on his head is gonna be his helmet, and he wears a Riddell Speedflex. Now guys, the Riddell Speedflex is easily one of the most popular helmets in the NFL, and you'll probably see it almost on like a weekly basis on this channel. What's unique about the Riddell Speedflex is it has that little hexagon shape in the front that indents and helps take in impact. So it's a really popular helmet right now, and I would argue it is Riddell's safest and most used helmet across North America. Now, when you're looking at like a base model this helmet that you can go on Riddell's website and buy it'll start you around $450 but if you're going all the way up to like the Riddell diamond fit which is only available for pro athletes that'll be over like a thousand dollars the diamond fit they actually take a 3d model of your head and build all the pads on the inside of the helmet to fit your head specifically it's a really cool technology however with Taylor Wands with the quality of photos we we're able to get of him we can't tell if it's a diamond but no if you want to get his exact same helmet it's gonna be at least 450 bucks on Riddell's website which we have linked down below. The next piece of equipment on Taylor Luan's helmet setup is going to be his face mask. Now, because he has a speed flex, he wears a speed flex face mask. It also, you can see it has two eye guards and the bars in the middle that run diagonally to each other is called the Texas style. So this face mask's code, if you go on Riddell's website, is gonna be the SF-2EG-TX. That stands for speed flex, two eye guards, Texas, face mask. Now that face mask is gonna cost you 70 bucks on Riddell's website. Now the next piece of equipment on Taylor Lewan's helmet setup is gonna be his visor. Pretty much the entire year he's been rocking a visor. Now in different like photo shoots and stuff, he's done some different mirrored visors. However, mirrored visors are not legal in games. So in game, most time right now, he's wearing a gray lens or a gray tint or a smoke Oakley visor. This is just a semi-tinted visor offered by Oakley, which you can pick up on their website. It's gonna run you about 74 bucks. Now, if you go on Oakley's website right now, the closest thing you can get to Taylor Lewan's visor is gonna be their gray lens visor. It's a semi-tinted visor that doesn't have any colors to it, which is why it is legal in the NFL. And don't forget, Oakley is the sponsor of the NFL, which is why you won't see anyone on this list not wearing an Oakley brand advisor. Personally, I think it's a really clean setup. The reason being is because he has that higher field of vision in the face mask he chose, the Oakley bubble visor does fit really well. If you go with like a thicker lineman style face mask, something like this that does have our channel sponsor shock visors in it right now it's really hard to get that bubbled visor to fit nice and up against it with an oakley one just because it's really hard to get those gaps even but with his more open style face mask it makes it easier to fit that oakley visor in and he still has those texas bars at the bottom to help prevent people from like being able to like get their fingers in it really easy now the last piece of equipment we're going to talk about on taylor's helmet setup is going to be his chin strap so so, so far we've only covered sports star chin straps on this channel and that's because it's by far the most popular chin straps in the league however taylor has been rocking the standard Riddell hard cup chin strap for like since he's been in the league. I'm not sure why he hasn't switched to Sportster yet because it's clearly a better option. Maybe he just likes the way it fits and he's just happy with the way it, it's set up. But he just has a standard non branded Riddell white chin strap he wears. He does have a speed flex, however, he doesn't use the cam lock system, he just uses standard uh, snaps and buckles on it, and then it is attached at the top with like the strap lock system as well. So there's no buckles on the top, it's just screwed in, and then two buckles on the bottom to be easily undone. Now you can also see he definitely has like an extra large version of this because it is a super deep chin strap on him. It'd be the equivalent of like the Sports Star XD models as an extra deep. And I think we might see him make a switch in the future. I would if I was him, um, but at this point, that's what he's rocking. Now it is interesting to note that in preseason this year and in training camp, Taylor actually rocked an alternate setup for a little bit of time. So instead of wearing his traditional speed flex and then his SF2EG TX setup, he wore a shut F7 face mask for practice. He wore it with a Nike unbranded mirrored gray visor 
and he wore it with just like a standard shut face mask. He didn't wear that setup for a really long time, probably just trying some different stuff out and seeing how it works. Um, but every time in game so far this year, he's been in that full speed flex setup that I just talked about. Okay, the next thing on the list for Taylor is gonna be his shoulder pads. So like a lot of NFL players, his are custom pads. He wears the X-Tech X2 custom shoulder pads. Now these shoulder pads started around $500, but they probably just go up in there depending how much stuff and work he has done to them. Overall for O-linemen, these are a really good pad. The reason being is O-linemen don't really need a lot of shoulder pad. They're not dealing with a lot of hitting directly on their shoulders. It's more of just something that they have to wear, but you can see a lot of linemen in the league nowadays are going with thinner and smaller pads to gain that mobility. And then they're really not that at much risk of hurting their shoulders. So he's wearing those X-Tech X2 two pads those will be linked in the description down below as well okay now the next thing on this list normally we cover like what kind of sleeves these guys are wearing on the field right different like adidas or nike sleeves or cold weather sleeves or something but taylor luan has sleeves of his own now his are going to be full tattoos you can see he doesn't wear anything on his arms in games there's been a couple times where he's wearing like one arm sleeve in photo shoots but for the most part in games he wears nothing he wants to show off every single tattoo he has now, if we wanted to put a price tag on it, I wouldn't even know how. I have like one tattoo that cost me like 400 bucks. So let's just call it 10 grand worth of ink on like his whole arms and a little bit on his stomach and who knows where else he has tattoos. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to pay a little homage to him because we know how proud he is of all of his tattoos and it had to make the list. Okay, working our way down, the next thing is gonna be the wrist straps that he wears on a every single game basis. Now you can see with a lot of like running backs, receivers and stuff, they generally just like tape their wrists or do some really simple stuff. But with linemen, they're blocking and their hands are in this angle so often, they want additional wrist support as much as they can get. Now, although Taylor's are unbranded, I'm pretty sure I know the exact ones he's wearing. I think he's wearing the Don Joy Aniform wrist straps. Don Joy is like one of the best companies in the game when it comes to like knee braces or any type of like stabilization technology when it comes to football. Their wrist straps are really good. They have two different levels of them. They just have their basic one and they aniform, you can tell because it has a bigger plate on the back to help prevent your wrist from cocking back too far. Another feature is it does have two Velcro wrist straps that go around there, so it is really secure. So chances are, if you are seeing a player in the league where you're looking at them and you see like this big black thing covering their wrist that kind of goes and overlaps their glove a little bit, it's probably gonna be the Don Joy Aniform wrist strap and it runs you about 35 bucks. Okay, the next thing on the list is gonna be his gloves. Now, Taylor Luan is still wearing the Nike Superbad 5.0 gloves. He started wearing these when they came out last year and he has not switched to the 6.0s this year. Now, one of the reasons I think that might be is because the 6.0s this year, if you watched the review, actually got thinner padding. They kind of went back to how like the Superbad 2.0s was a little bit thinner down the fingers. So although that is more popular for some of like the running backs in the league, like Zeke, that likes that padding. I think Taylor wanted to stick with that receiver grip on the inside, but he wanted still that thicker padding that the 5.0 offered on the outside. Now, game in and game out, he pretty much wears probably not the same pair, but he always wears a white pair. It doesn't really matter what jersey the team is wearing. He likes to go with that white glove with the black wrist strap look over top of it, which I do think looks really good as well. And these super bad are a padded receiver glove, so not technically for linemen, but they do have padding on the top, receiver grip on the inside. Maybe he's waiting for that time he's gonna like get to catch a pass or make a throw or you know he's hoping to like get on a fumble or something so he wants that receiver grip. Um, but otherwise there's not really a lot of reasons to be wearing those gloves other than like the swag. Now with these Nike Superbad 5.0s, you can't actually pick them up like brand new anymore unless you go on like an eBay, a StockX or another different site like that. You can pick up the Nike Superbad 6.0s down below with our East Bay link. Those will be 55 bucks and you can get the exact same color way he wears, just the all whites. Okay, working our way down, the next thing we're gonna cover, which he doesn't wear a lot, but he did wear it for a crucial catch this year is gonna be his towel. He's been wearing the NFL's crucial catch towel on him. We've seen him wear a towel where it's just like a standard NFL one. Um, so we're not quite sure, you know, what he, why he chooses to wear one or not. Okay, now we're getting to the lower body. So as far as like thigh pads and knee pads go, he doesn't wear anything branded. He doesn't wear anything crazy. He does, looks like he just has them in because he has to have them in. He goes with super low, super thin, super low profile pads for his thighs and knees. Not a lot going on there, not a lot of protection, and it doesn't really look like that's something he really cares about. But underneath it, you can see he always wears super skin tight pants. And then underneath that, he wears skin tight compression, full length leggings.
So I think in this section I actually made a mistake. So as you can see, he actually wears like a Titan sock. And then over top of that sometimes he wears a three quarter compression tight with another layer underneath it. So it's actually like three layers, a three quarter compression tight, a full length compression tight underneath that, and then a sock over that. I'm assuming because he wears so much Nike, he's probably wearing the Nike full length compression sleeves. However, he could be wearing like the unbranded East Bay ones or like we really have no idea. All we know is he always wears them in the navy titans color and we will have the east bay ones linked in the description down below they're only 20 bucks they're super affordable and they're honestly really good i've had a pair for like six years at this point and i still wear them now he does have to have some kind of sock on to go in his cleat it looks just like a nike basketball sock like to be honest just kind of tucked under his sleeve you can only ever see like little slivers of it pop out it's just like a white sock that he wears nothing crazy now underneath that we're assuming he does have some kind of spatted or taped ankle because he wears no braces over top in any way that you can see the nice thing is that makes it really easy for us for cleats so he wears the nike alpha menace pro 2 mids these cleats again came out two years ago the same time that his super bad 5.0s came out and clearly he didn't like the menace pro 3s that came out this year so he's stuck with the twos for back-to-back -back years now these cleats are not as popular at o-line because they don't have a ton of ankle support in them and you can actually see how much his ankles are able to move around in these cleats however they're super light they're really breathable it has this same dope traction plate on the bottom which gives you a ton of grip on there so i could see why he likes it for that reason and yeah i'm just assuming that if he's wearing a not very supportive cleat and we can't see any taping or spatting over the top underneath his sleeves underneath his sock underneath that cleat he has to have some kind of spatting or tape job to help give his ankles some support while still giving him mobility so there you guys go i hope you guys enjoyed today's review of taylor luan's gear all the way from his head all the way down now if you want to replicate everything including his tattoos yeah it's probably gonna run you like 15 grand but if you just want to do his full helmet setup his shoulder pads pants cleats it's probably gonna run you around the 1500 to 2000 dollar mark depending on where you're getting it and like your shipping costs associated and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video this is my first time doing one of these so let me know down below if you think i missed anything or anything we should pick up on also comment who you want to see next for us to do a full gear breakdown again guys my name is tony follow me down below at lemon football and thanks again for watching another episode of footballers.